9 p.m. edition of the Urban Debate. Viewers, last night we gave you details and what it really means on the look of it when the government decided to block 59 Chinese apps and the biggest of the names that are widely used across India. And I'm sure all of you would have gone back and checked your own phones to see which of these apps are already on your phone and to what extent have you been using them and what possibly could be the impact now. So today, I want to take a little bit more time to talk about what does this mean if you had half a dozen of these 59 apps, if not more, and you've been using them for a while, what kind of access did they have? What have you lost? Is there anything else that you can do right now? Some of the questions that we will seek answers to. But let me just tell you how... And what we understand right now, the government has said that there are these 15 Chinese apps which are a threat to our sovereignty, integrity and of course there is a data security and privacy issue. Which is why they have been blocked using section 69A of the Information Technology Act which is also very interesting and we'll talk about that. Now the internet service providers have been told to act. I'm sure by now for some of the apps you would have gotten the alert saying that well, right now, it's not accessible as per the government instructions. Google, Apple and others have already removed these apps from their download stores. So new uh, users, of course, cannot download these apps anymore. They, are, uh, they will be blacklisting of every host name that is associated with these apps and domain name associated with these apps. And the government will also, we are given to understand, continue to monitor if there are any unofficial versions being downloaded. But of course, um, what is interesting is that there has been a wide use of these apps for a long time. So is it now too late? And are there other apps that you should be careful about? These are the questions that I want to ask our experts who are joining us this evening. Let's say good evening to Tarun Vig, Information Security Consultant and Co-Founder for In A Few Labs. Uh, Dr. Pawan Duggal, Cyber Law Expert, also joining us right now. Dr. Duggal, let's begin with you. Uh, uh, the fact that we've had a series of conversations in the past as well about some of the uh, apps that we use, data security and privacy issues, the fact that these apps may be using our data uh, and sharing it with third parties, irrespective of what they tell us on the face of it. Uh, is this on similar lines? And if it is so, uh, should we as a consumer, as a user be concerned that we had about 10 of these apps on our phone for all this time? Well, this kind of a ban or a blocking order should actually be a wake-up call for a large number of Indian citizens who have been sleeping away to glory while downloading these apps. Now, typically it happens amongst the Indian users that 9.5 out of 10 do not even uh, read the terms and conditions or the privacy policy, and they mindlessly accept all the permissions that are sought by the app. Now, if you have done that, then you have to quickly realize that for the last so many weeks, months, and years, while you are using the said app, the app was collecting all information about you, including your location, including access to your gallery, to access to your microphone, and also is for the, has been transmitting the said information on a continuing basis outside the territorial boundaries of India to China. Now, you could say, I'm an innocent person. I am uh, just a common man. Why should they be interested in my data? I think that perception needs to be rectified. Today, they're only respecting you because you're a data entity. Imagine the data of crores of Indians going out of India, getting collated together, getting analyzed by big data analytics and machine learning. And then the kind of insights that they're likely to bring forward are indeed remarkable, which could potentially be misused against not just you as individuals, but also the Indian nation and Indian networks. That's why I think it's time to give us a rude shock to come out of our so-called sense of complacency and quickly start realizing the government's responsibility of cybersecurity is not alone. You and I have to play an equally proactive role in protecting our cybersecurity. And that should begin with our own data. The entire world needs to know only that much of my data as they need to know basis. They cannot keep on having access to all my information. And with this kind of information going, what is the guarantee that I'm not being surveilled upon? I'm not being monitored. There have been reports that the CCTV camera applications have, uh, have been also monitoring a lot of information about people. So I think at a time when the Indian law has been silent about apps, apps economy, and enabling legal frameworks for apps, and at a time that we have as users not been sensitized 
about the legal policy and regulatory issues of these apps and their prejudicial impact upon the enjoyment of our personal privacy and data privacy as also data protection. It's time to wake up and try to start seeing things in a new perspective. There's an age old saying, from the time you wake up, consider that as the morning and start working. I think we have to get started right now. Okay, it is time to wake up, says Pavan Dugal. You know, for each and every consumer who has a, a, a phone with a, many apps on it, this is what you need to know. Now, why is it important? Uh, Tarun Vig, a lot of people will turn around and say, I'm all right if my data is being shared, if it's just my name and address or what I buy and where I like to eat. Uh, you know, if that kind of a data is being shared, I don't mind. But there is a larger problem, isn't it? There is also a problem that there will be then institutions or agencies who use this for their own propaganda. Yep. You know, the, these are also these uh, soft power tools that countries like China may want to use. They, you, they take your basic information, but they use it for other purposes. So I'll, I'll give you two examples on this. You know, the first example is one of the applications which has been banned with CamScan. Now, cam scanner has been widely used by our government body, uh, you know, by army, military, by multiple people in the government to scan their documents, right? The movement uh, you scan a document using cam scanner, it is actually being stored on Chinese servers. So whatever documents you are scanning, whatever government uh, communication is being scanned using cam scanner has already been leaked. Now, let's take a more wider example. You know, let's take an example of an application like UC Browser. Now, UC Browser is actually storing every piece of information that you are searching on the net. You know, they are actually uh, in, they're controlling your DNS. Once they are installed on your phone, they change the settings to ensure that whatever you are searching is going to them. Based on that, they are profiling you. Now, imagine the value of this data that tomorrow, once they have profiled enough number of people, they can actually influence the elections of a nation. You know, once they realize that in this particular mm. pocket, you mm. have people who, are, who, who have a lot of, let's say, radical views or religion views, they can keep showing them radical or religious websites to communalize them. And, uh, you know, once they realize that a person has a, let's say, a, a right-wing or a left-wing personality, they keep showing them advertisements accordingly. So actually what they're doing is taking control over, you know, the 130 crore Indians that are using those applications. And that is the danger. Last but not the least, right, when they are taking data from my phone, it's not just my data that they are taking. In my contact list, I have, you know, number of multiple people, in my photographs, I have photographs not just of me, but of my friends, my family, my kids. So all that data is getting leaked out without those people having done anything wrong. So these are the three parameters that we have to be careful about. And China, you know, as an economy, they have not started now. They started this way back in 2007, collecting data, getting their own companies called Huawei and Reti to be, become a part of network infrastructure. So they have been collecting data on India and on multiple other countries for a long duration of time now. Yes, and, and imagine that, viewers, you know, what Tarun is saying, uh, match it and uh, uh, add to that this information that, for example, on a TikTok, there were 100 million active users, a large percentage of Indians on it, Cam Scanner, 100 million active users, UC Browser, 130 million active users, and so on and so forth, and, and widely used app in our country. All of that information for years now has been going to the to the to the country that actually owns this and and then we don't know where all it's actually being shared so now that we've said this the point then becomes uh, tarun that is it too late what about those who are already using these uh, apps and their data that's already gone out and if we are concerned now what do i do now to check about the other apps which may be on on my phone they may not be chinese uh, but they could still have similar intentions uh, see, the first thing any user who installs an application has to do is check for all the permissions that application is stored, right? Uh, some of the applications will ask you for permission for mic recording, for maybe, you know, accessing your gallery. But if you feel that the app does not need those permissions, do not give those permissions. Give it on demand. Anytime that you use it, for instance, a simple example being WhatsApp, right? You share locations on WhatsApp. So WhatsApp needs access to your location data. But you don't make it, give it permanent access. You only give it when you really need to share the location. Otherwise, WhatsApp does not have access to your location data. 
Uh, this is a very simple process that most of the people have to follow, right? When you're installing an app, figure out what are the minimum basic permissions required and only give that. And in most of the cases, try and give permissions on demand, not permanent access. Second part, uh, you know, when you talk about the application scenario, a lot of people, they download an application and then they don't delete it from their phone. I've seen so many people doing it. They download the application, they use it for a week or two weeks, and that's it. The application is still installed on your phone. It is still sending data. If you actually look at <clears throat> the data on the service provider, you will see so many application leaks. It is unbelievable. So the next thing that we should do is sanitize our phones. You know, when you look at your phone, you realize that these are applications you haven't used for more than a week. Delete those applications. You can always install them again. So these are two, three precautions, simple precautions which a layman can do. Of course, there are, uh, you know, for, for uh, security-sensitive people, there is another mechanism where you start sanitizing your phone, checking your phone for all the outgoing data and everything. But for a layman, these two, three steps should suffice. Okay. The other aspect that I wanted to talk to both of you was, and you know, this is raised by some of the experts who were on our conversation yesterday, which was a quick reaction when this decision came about, was the use of, uh, you know, 69A, Section 69A of the Information Technology Act, a law that actually deals with cybercrime uh, and gives the government that uh, a tool to actually go ahead and take these kind of decisive action. Uh, Pawan Dugul, is this perhaps one of the bigger ones, uh, examples that we've seen where such this law has been used? Does this set a precedent for what could and should ideally be done on a frequent basis? Well, 69A has been used for blocking a lot of information in the past. But this is potentially the first time in the history of independent India that so many of these apps, 59 of them, have been sought to be blocked, which have a connection with one country, here being China. By actually blocking this and by resorting to the grounds of the same being having a prejudicial impact upon the security, sovereignty, integrity of India or public order, the government is seeking to actually give a very strong message, not just to China, but to the entire world. And the message is that the government is not going to allow any kind of data initiatives that are aimed to permeate inside the Indian boundaries and act as potential uh, exercises to breach the cybersecurity of the Indian ecosystem. This is just a precursor of things to come, because now after this decision has come in, there are now news reports that China has been very seriously concerned about this decision. And we've also heard that uh, in China, Indian websites have also been blocked. Now, this is going to see an escalation, but I see nothing wrong in that escalation, because at the end of the day, these are two sovereign governments who are all wanting to do everything in their power and possession to protect their sovereign interests, both in the physical world as also in cyberspace. Unfortunately, at the international level, there is no one international cyber legal framework. There is no one international cybersecurity law. The norms of behavior for state and non-state actors in this space have not yet fully evolved. Well, in fact, stakeholders have not even been unanimous to the fact that international law applies to this scenario. So in this kind of an ecosystem, we will have to see how things will keep on evolving. But I expect the Indian government to take a much more stronger action. Right now, these are apps. Now, the appropriate response from China is going to be, it's going to flood the Indian market with new apps. And therefore, the, the search for new Chinese apps hmm. and the search for making them, blocking them will keep on happening. But I think far more cogent, holistic approach needs to be adopted by India for protecting its cybersecurity. That at a time when it does not have a dedicated law on cybersecurity, when its legal framework on data protection is not yet taken off the ground. I think uh, at a time when the national cybersecurity policy of 2013 has remained a paper tiger, the focus now has to be on the government on what kind of standard operating procedures it needs to come up with to inform all stakeholders in the event of cyber attacks, because I believe these episodes are now going to lead to far more increasing cyber attacks, not just on the banking networks and on individuals in India, but also on critical information infrastructure. So we need to be prepared for more legal basis and for more effective action to counter these challenges in the coming times.
in fact just to take that point forward uh, you know uh, if we are already way too behind uh, and a lot more needs to be done to speed this process up because i was reading this uh, um you know article today uh, tarun that said that in 2017 when the doklam standoff was happening uh, with the chinese at that point of time allegedly uh, you know uh, uh, thousands of troops at that time were told to uninstall some of these apps and chinese apps big over security concerns so clearly the concerns have been there for at least 3 odd years if not more but the action has only come now perhaps because there was a larger political messaging that also had to be sent across uh in in the light of that do we need to do a lot more uh, and are we moving too slowly then so uh, first you are right you know the questions about most of these apps including uc browser were raised way back in 2016 i remember we had raised a report which was submitted to the government which had actually conclusively proved that uc browser is stealing data right and it has uh, come out multiple times that uc browser left vulnerabilities which could be hacked by uh, any hacker now whether those vulnerabilities were accidental or they were left deliberately is uh, anybody's guess right. so uh, but by but my response here is that uh, you know at least we have taken a step and it's not a small step right a lot of people are looking at it just as blocking 59 applications what you are doing is you have taken you have wiped off millions from the valuation of a mobile application like tiktok and you have you know it's it's they have lost a huge chunk of their consumer base in a single day their valuation has gone for a top and this has left the market open for any indian application maybe like chingari or what to come up and capture this consumer base so this is not just a cyber security step that the government has taken it can actually lead to a huge economic boost for the you know make in india initiative and uh, yes there is a lot that needs to be done if you look at uh, bsnl you know our entire northeast wimax uh, project has been done by huawei right so that basically means that the entire northeast infrastructure of bsnl has been set up by an organization which you know of china which is very very interested in northeast into what we are doing right uh, apart from that uh, most of our uh, equipment in the power sector uh, comes from china so if we are looking at becoming uh, you know uh, self reliant and using indigenous technology there has to be uh, a lot more which has to be done having said that you know we have taken the we have taken the first step And I guess for that the government has to. Okay, no. In fact, I was going to ask that question. You are right. For example, there is already a call, quite a bit of conversation, and chorus is growing louder for even the Chinese company now being, uh, uh, and they were allowed after much debate and deliberation to be the partner for the 5G trials. Uh, so that's something that the government may want to look at. But also then Chinese phones. You know, um, many say. Uh, what's the point of simply banning the apps if the phones are still being widely used in our country uh, tarun would that be a fair, you know uh, also a fair concern to have uh, definitely uh, you know chinese phone xiaomi has been accused there was a huge report i am talking about way back in 2014 uh, where it was proven that uh, redmi phones were taking our sms and our contacts uh, to servers in china so it was conclusively proven then as well having said that uh, see as i said it's a first step now this is an actually this is an experiment i consider this as an experiment you have a market space open you have wiped off millions from the hmm. valuation of companies like uc browser and tiktok if you have indian companies which capture this space and increase their valuation by that amount suddenly you will see a lot of other indian companies trying to jump into everything that chinese are manufacturing whether it's a router whether it's a firewall or even a mobile phone See, once people start tasting success, once people realize that the government is giving initiative and pushing the Chinese equipment out, you know, you will have Indian companies filling that void. So uh, there needs to be more done, definitely. But uh, as I said again, you know, we have taken the first step, and if we are successful at it, then this experiment has uh, no ending. Okay, there's also one other query, you know, that some of our uh, uh, viewers had, which is to say that some of these uh, are weren't just limited as apps, especially the shopping portals, which has become a big talking point. What happens to their websites, uh, Mr. Dugal? Does this also uh, include that? I know the TikTok website is not working anymore, but it, uh, does the order largely restrict it to just the mobile apps or overall presence in India? Well. when you look at uh, the power under 69 it's a very very broad power under section 69a of the information technology act this is for blocking any information in the electronic form from computer systems and networks and communication devices physically located in india 
So if the idea is to ban these apps, that idea cannot be taken in a partial mode when you block these particular apps. It's a logical corollary that you will also like to block all the websites that are related to the said apps. Similarly, all kinds of domain names that are likely to have the name of uh, the said app are also potentially likely to be blocked. Otherwise, you are just leaving the doors of your entire house open because in any case, uh, we have historically seen that you know banning these kinds of apps and websites is easy on paper. Trying to implement and enforce these kind of bans is a very, very difficult proposition. This is all the more so since Indians have become very tech savvy and increasingly a large number of Indians are using virtual private networks for accessing these blocked uh, apps or websites. So clearly, I think uh, the intent of the government is to target the entire process holistically and to deal with all kind of data and information in the electronic form pertaining to the app so that the ultimate objective is that the app is completely disabled that the app's data stream that was consistently going from India to China, that gets stopped. And the revenues that they were constantly generating by monetizing the, the data of Indians in India, uh, that comes to a grinding halt. But I think that's not just sufficient. We need to do far beyond. But more significantly, we also need to create a more awareness amongst Indian users. I've seen various instances when after the, the blocking of an app or a website gets ordered, the traffic to the said blocked website uh, gets far, farther more because people want to be curious to find out why, what was so special in that app for which this app got to be banned. So I believe people need to be sensitized that they do not really need to engage in any of these kinds of irresponsible behavior. Here's the choice that you have to make between national interest on the one hand and being, uh, you know, uh, giving into temptation of just trying to explore the, the peculiarities of a particular uh, banned app. But all said and done, I think this is a starting point. The government should take it on to its logical conclusion, including to deal with how to disengage with the, the yeah. active uh, implementation of uh, Chinese phones and Chinese equipments in governmental agencies and in the corporate sector. And other apps or same apps with different names uh, or different domain names or from different, you know, um, country of origin. It's something that at least the Chinese businessmen also regularly do to avoid the trade barriers. So uh, I, you're right. And this is the point that I want to leave this conversation with that uh, a lot more has to be done in an institutionalized manner. The government has to have a mechanism in place where constantly these checks and balances are done. You heard the two experts right now on this panel saying that for some of these apps, concerns were raised as as long as, uh, you know, uh, 2016, that far back. And for four years, we let people download these apps, use these apps, their information being shared with, you know, whichever third party agency. Well, that's a cause of concern. And maybe right now the trigger was the uh, uh, face off with China, which is where the government has finally turned around and taken this decision. But why should we wait for this kind of a trigger? Shouldn't the security and data privacy be a reason enough by itself for the government to act against such apps and act frequently, keep a close eye on what's taking place. The law is present. They've now demonstrated to you how they can use that law and go ahead and take action on your part. Listen to what our experts say. Be a little bit more aware. Be a little bit more careful about what app you're using and that what kind of access to your own information are you giving that specific app developer? Thank you so much for joining us on the first conversation, Mr. Pavan Dugal and Tarun Vik. Thank you for speaking to us here on Mirror Now. Now, let's very quickly move on to the second part of this conversation. And this is slightly different, viewers. We've, we've spoken so much about Chinese apps. We've spoken so much about TikTok and the kind of content that's there. And the Chinese are using these apps for their own propaganda and for per perhaps, uh, you know, the these app developers using your information and sharing it with third-party agencies, compromising your data and all of that. There is one other aspect, which is the popularity of some of these apps. And, you know, from Cam Scanner to the shopping portals to UC browsers to TikTok. A lot of these apps were hugely popular in our country, perhaps even more than in China itself. So what happens to the social media content generation world? Many said... That when TikTok became big in our country and became big in the smaller towns and cities outside of the key urban metros, that 
literally changed the whole game for content creation and brought about a big change in that industry. Today, a lot of those people who became big influencers, who had millions of followers, much more than any of your Bollywood celebrities do on regular social media or other social media platforms, today all of those people must be wondering, well, what now? I'm sure within a couple of days, we will find the answer to what now. There are already many alternatives, in, including Indian apps, which can be your alternatives to such uh, uh, apps that existed. But how does the evolution really take place? From Twitter to YouTube to Instagram to TikTok, are the consumers different? Is the content creation different? And so what will the influencers from this specific platform do now? Where do we evolve and where do we go from here? That's the conversation I really want to have. Let's say good evening. Sukriti Chaturvedi, content creator. Paras Tomar, also a you know, TikTok uh, content creator and influencer. Madan Gauri, a YouTuber, joins us this evening. Shivani Kapila, also a content creator. And Shifali Bhatt, a uh, tech and culture reporter with Economic Times, joins us this evening. Uh, let me go across to Paras first and ask him this, uh, Paras. Uh, first, let's just talk about what you know apps like TikTok really did for social media content generation. For this entire generation of influencers and content creators who've overnight become stars on these platforms. You know, what was amazing about somebody like TikTok and somebody like me falls into a middle category there. As actors, we use social media uh, to sort of catapult our shows and talk about the films. But there was a whole bunch of creators who came from remote villages in the country who suddenly found a lot of fame and a lot of money because they were able to do stuff that they could not have done otherwise. Every single person who was a Bollywood fan could star in their own movie. And I think that suddenly gave rise to the fact that content creators were born in the country. Now, what happened today, uh, you know, while of course there's big talk about privacy and that is a major concern. But, you know, a lot of the TikTok creators actually come from a space of innocence in this. A lot of them are very young. And the perspective I've got from a lot of people I've spoken today is the fact that, you know, for all these years, if TikTok was legal, it was absolutely there. When we're using an app, our assumption is it's absolutely legal, it's privacy safe, and there's no problem with it. So suddenly when there's a ban, and then there's a talk about the fact that why are you using an app which is Chinese, then the questions are, you know, we also use German cars and Japanese cars. We use Apple, which is an American company. Tomorrow, if that happens in another country, for creators, it's very hard to be three steps ahead when it was all legal. From the creation perspective, uh, there is a huge difference in the demographic that TikTok provided as opposed to the demographic that watches our content on, say, Instagram or YouTube. It is very obvious that TikTok hit the heartland. It sort of get, got to the tier two, tier three cities. So even for someone like me who traditionally did only English content, we started making Hindi content because it reached a lot more people on TikTok. So today I had a whole bunch of people who called me and say, you know, this was a revenue source. Uh, Shivani, like, for example, has left a job and she does TikTok. I I know a lot of kids who come from college who never took up another job because TikTok was paying them so much money, as in they were making money through TikTok. So I think for creators, this was this avenue which got created. It was something which was fantastic. No career counselor could have taught you. And then when it hits you like this, it's a question of confusion about where do we go from here now? Yes, um, you know, uh, and that's the question that I want to address. But before that, uh, uh, you know, let me ask uh, Sukriti as well. Sukriti, um, the role that the, some of these apps, especially TikTok, played in the kind of uh, uh, evolution of content and the platform that so many content creators got, like Paras was saying. And, you know, I always found this extremely interesting about this app that it wasn't your Bollywood celebrities or your other musicians and singers and artists who had huge fan following. It was actually, you know, right. people from uh, smaller towns and even villages who with their own content had millions of followers who were actually tracking uh, the kind of uh, entertainment that was being put out. In that sense, it was very different uh, from some of the other platforms that we have. Absolutely. Uh, I absolutely agree on that. In fact, uh, only today I was uh, discussing as to how uh, TikTok was so different from uh, all the other apps, from Instagram, from YouTube. Uh, Twitter, I'm not really active on Twitter, so I can't really comment about that. But from uh, YouTube and Instagram, very, very different in terms of algorithm also. Because the kind of content that you used to see on TikTok are from, is from people you, you perhaps don't follow. You know, mostly content that you sort of consume on TikTok were, were from, you know, people that you didn't really follow. And you were like, and I also personally feel that TikTok was a great platform for a lot of people to uh, sort of showcase their talent. You know, because I don't think before this, there was any platform like this. Mm. So, you know, short 
15 seconds video, a short video, a lot of transitions, a lo lot of things that you could do. In fact, I uh, hats off to a lot of TikTok creators used to put in a lot of uh, effort into that 15 second video and come out with a amazing product. So I think in terms of uh, the content, in yeah. terms of the, uh, uh, I think it was, it is very different. And uh, there are there are these some wonderful uh, filters that used to be there on the app that I'm sure a lot of us will miss now. Uh, but uh, definitely very, very different. And uh, in fact, TikTok also in its official sort of release said that uh, it sort of made content very democratized, which means that a lot of people got an opportunity to sort of uh, make content that they want. Like you said, a lot of people from villages, you know, so many people that perhaps you would never, ever see, you know, uh, that sort of talent uh, you know mm. was was showcased so i think uh, that is one thing that is where tiktok was very very different from uh, the other apps and uh, moving forward i'm sure there'll be a lot of alternatives uh, and a lot of people are already talking about some so we still have to explore it but uh, yes in terms of uh, the app being different the platform being different <laughs> it was you're right very very different Well, Sh Shivani, so then what next? Uh, you know, um, is there a lot of conversations that you've had with um, other people uh, or who were very active on TikTok on, well, what happens now? Suddenly overnight, well, this is gone. Where do we go from here? I am, I'm still numb. <laughs> I So today at four o'clock when I opened the application, I saw that it's blank. And it's been two years. I've left my job. I was into human resources, working with MNC, aiming for AM. And uh, I left that because one of my projects went viral on women's safety. And that's how I started my journey here. Uh, I became a content creator here. I started spreading social awareness, motivational content, and, and became passionate about it. The passion survived inside me. From being somebody's daughter to somebody's wife, I was little gloves. That was me. And today when I saw that blank screen, um, I was, um, I'm still, I'm, I, I feel I've, I've, I've had a breakup. Like, that's the feeling that I have. And I do not know what's next. Next, I think I need to uh, think a little bit. I need to, I need to think, I need to gather my thoughts. Uh, that's, this is a cover that we've heard bachpan se. It has happened. So my life is mm -hmm. different now. My life has changed. And uh, I hope honestly, you're not planning not to go back world. to your corporate job again. I, I, I gave it a thought, but so many emotions are flowing right now. I thought of editing my CV, yeah. uh, but there's so many thoughts that I have. Uh, I think I need to gather them all and decide what to do. My Sasuma is is also a creator. My, my journey is incomplete without her. Uh, and and, and uh, we don't know what will we do. <laughs> Yeah, you know, actually, that was the other thing about uh, TikTok, which was very different. Um, the uh, For people who are not active on it, the perception is that it's about, uh, you know, a platform for youngsters who use this to express themselves. But you, you I, I thought it was age agnostic. And, and I actually saw, like what Shivani was saying, uh, uh, a lot of people from different age groups really freak out and enjoy themselves with the kind of content they were creating. Um, one question yeah. I want to ask before we go to the where uh, where next from here on. Paras, in the last few days though, or, or maybe a few weeks, has there been a difference in the way people perceive and respond to TikTok, uh, you know, um, content creators with all this narrative that's been built and, you know, the anti-China rhetoric that's been there has there been some kind of a uh, negative feedback that's come across your way? 100%. 100%. In fact, to be honest with you, we also were agree, yeah. in the middle of a crossfire. That's a very funny thing. Every video that you have, people on TikTok would only say, why are you using TikTok? And in my head, the first thing I would say is, but I'm pretty sure that the phone you're using is Xiaomi, OnePlus, Vivo, Oppo, <laughs> all of these phones. I'm sure you're watching these on Xiaomi TVs and OnePlus 8 has happened, the OnePlus 8 uh, sale, it was sold out in minutes. So, you know, and, and the larger question I had for people, and this was the quest thing that people didn't want to answer. I put up the same video on Instagram and the same video on TikTok. The same video on Instagram gets 30,000 views. The same video on uh, on Instagram gets 30,000. On TikTok, we get 4.5 lakh views. So the point was, people were obviously consuming the same content on TikTok. But where does the onus come? The onus comes on the creator. Now, you know, it's very, for, for all of us also, there was this slight light level where we also felt, you know, kind of weird about it because suddenly the, the people love to throw the word anti-national around very carelessly, not realizing that these words have a lot of implication. 
But luckily, I was very vocal about it. I put out a lot of content on my Instagram in the last couple of days, and people are actually very supportive. When you explain this to them, they say, "Be sorry, where you?" And they look at the smartphone they have in their hand. They say, "Hi, this is Apple. It's not Apple. It's Samsung. It's not a Chinese company." So I think when people get the reality check, they realize that we are so intertwined. You know, mm-hmm. the other thing which I find interesting when in when in government banned Chinese apps, my first question as a former journalist was, "I wanted to know has China also banned some Indian apps?" Kuch mila hi nahi. Aise koi apps nahi the India ki which are very popular in China. So I was just like, we are definitely more dependent on China than China is on us. So you know, you have this reality check a few times, and I think uh, that definitely did hit us. Okay, let me also bring in Madan Gauri uh, on this. Madan, uh, uh, where do we go from here? Uh, can the existing platforms like YouTube or Instagram uh, really be- uh, become the place where this entire uh, set of users and content creators now moves, or are there other Indian alternatives that everybody is suddenly talking about in the last couple of days uh, that can find an opportunity here? Uh, what most people forget when they talk of uh, alternative Indian uh, apps, right? So we are comparing an app that is matured over time, that has matured over time, to an app probably a month or two months old. So just by going uh, by history, no app can be at the epitome of its play in just two months. So it is going to take time. But what most people forget when we talk of uh, alternative apps is that for every creator, irrespective of it's a meme or a or a book or a video or anything. For every creator, the creation is a child. So imagine 119. So I think uh, more than 100 million users, right? So 100 million TikTok users, and most of them. The beauty about TikTok is in Facebook you can be present and you need not post anything and yet you can see. Instagram you can just watch, but in TikTok everyone tries their own content, right? So imagine 100 million creators just in India have lost their creation. So I think that will that is going to impact a lot of people, you know, mentally. It's going to take a lot of time for people to get out of it. So people will take some time. And I think uh, today that uh, TikTok has mentioned that uh, Indian government has asked them to come and uh, you know submit the uh, clarifications. So let's hope that uh, the apps get back. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Let me bring in Shefali Bhat as well. The hope continues that maybe some of these apps will come back. But Shefali, is there a concern also? You know that there may be a larger impact. Uh, the government may have started with just fifty-nine Chinese apps, but there there is now a system. There is now a law that the government knows how to use uh, to crack down on such apps. Will that actually impact the future of some of these, uh, especially the you know the social media kind of platforms that we have? Yeah, you know, I wish there was an answer to that, uh, but at this point, you really don't know. And therefore, when the first announcement came, uh, a lot of people did say that uh, maybe the next thing to get banned could be Instagram or could be WhatsApp or could be Facebook. So you know, you don't know anymore. I also saw somebody tweet about how. uh none of these platforms are safe so guys go back to blogging because you know that's the only product that uh, you know that is your own that you can call your own uh so I, i i really wish i had an answer to that but it's interesting that you point out this so tiktok has been uh, in issues right it's been mired by issues uh, for quite some time now it was temporarily banned last year as well uh you know just a month ago there were issues again but if you were to see that the government had a tiktok account as well which was a blue tick verified account uh as of this morning that account was gone uh which kind of signaled that while people were saying maybe things will work out maybe clarifications will happen but by 4 pm or 5 pm the app was we couldn't access the app uh and Uh, i remember because i have been talking to a lot of these creators uh, over the last uh, 12 hours and uh, one sentiment that was uh, a, you know that that was felt across the board was that the last few times when there have been issues it was to do with content or several other things this time it's about border tensions the stakes are higher uh, you don't know what's likely to uh, happen anymore and therefore i guess the the emotional attachment is that much higher and you know the sense of loss is that much bigger because it feels real it feels that this is you know like this is like how you know one of them was saying uh, this feels like you know this is the final breakup like it's not there's not going to be a makeup after this it's not going to be a temporary breakup and i guess that feeling is something that's been palpable across all the creators that i've spoken to over the last 12 hours who 
uh, who really feel uh, uh, disappointed and dejected at this point. options you know like uh, madan was saying that you know, each app goes through its own phase of evolution uh, and maybe something new will not immediately reach the point to replace this but are there other options the indian ones that everybody keeps talking about that could perhaps provide a similar platform to all those who are feeling a little dejected tonight so again you know based on the conversations that i've had with creators or uh, uh, the the sentiment is that they tried Uh, a lot of these apps some tried mitro some tried chingari one of them uh, uh, clearly mentioned that i was into the app for 5 minutes and then the app hung my system hung and it's just not the same feeling and and it's true right a lot of people who were doing live videos last night saying this is my instagram account please follow the instagram account some people did do it lives and then they realized oh my god how will we do these do it videos uh, here on oh my god this filter will not be there and so just realizing the fact that a lot of these things that you know tiktok provided them will will not be there or the the likelihood of them not being there not being able to find music uh, music was huge for tiktokers i mean you know the discovery the usage how they kind of discovered global cultures because of this music it's it's been amazing so right. it won't be easy for a lot of these guys to replicate uh, some of these filters or even the ui and uh, the user interface and the user experience so soon so it's going to be a while before uh, there could be a, a tiktok replica that that creators could like is is the sense that i'm getting from the people that i've spoken to so far okay um uh, maybe you know um, let me ask a couple of them as well paras was there a lot of um... also uh, you know we know that a lot of advertisers uh, uh, advertisers had moved to tiktok and were you know investing heavily in pumping their products through uh, tiktok what happens to all of those deals if there were paid partnerships or uh, and uh, uh, deals that had already been struck halfway through is there a lot of chaos on that front if i if i have a slightly smaller smile is because i also lost about 35000 rupees today because i was supposed to make a brand video for somebody for tiktok tomorrow and they very politely called me that hi sir instagram pe bana lena to 100% uh, so repercussion there but i would want to very clearly say that commerce was a very big part of it every single brand could be seen on tiktok there was a reason for that the kind of numbers that you got on tiktok were unrivaled i started a whole brand called muske by paris a cosmetic brand we sell to 18 countries because of tiktok why because i had about 3 million followers and we realized that the math was very simple even if 1% of these 3 million were buying my products we were making a business if i as a brand owner was doing it everyone was doing it right so for a lot of people the concern that suddenly this money is gone it's like you know it's it's like working in a company and the company is just going belly up or you're just being sacked and you have a pink slip in your hand and i think that is what has happened to a lot of people the other thing i wanted to say which you guys were discussing about the kind of app that tiktok is the content that tiktok had was native only to that app those filters the slow motions the stuff that you were doing now i might be on instagram i post there but i don't have that ai to be able to make those videos anymore so that's not going to happen in fact most people's instagram feed now was full of only tiktok videos so all that is going to change now we're going to go back to posing nicely in some beaches on instagram we're going to put like these hot looking photos and you know show off our lifestyle we're going to go back to that but the content creation that came from small towns is most definitely going to take a hit Okay uh is there something shivani you want to add to this uh i think uh, just not about the content uh, of course what paris said is very relatable and i'm able to relate to what he's saying as a creator also i think uh, the the enthusiasm to see 15 second content and the consumption rate of 15 second content uh showed extremely great potential which will be very difficult to you know uh bring out or sustain because that is what tiktok brought uh, introduced us with so uh, that's something that i think uh, will become very difficult because uh, other platforms need a lot of efforts before you claim a content there uh, however with with tiktok it was easy journey like quick fixes insight uh, filters and then it was 15 second that's it and uh, that's what i have to 
Okay, the other part that I wanted to ask was, and I've seen, you know, some of these conversations online. Uh, Madan, are, are YouTubers or, you know, those who are purely on one platform and not on the other kind of celebrating that the, the, at least one of their competitors is gone? Um, um, I'm not aware of any creators who do that. Uh, I guess, uh, that's not happening right huh? now in our South Indian uh, internet space, I can assure you that. We're celebrating that oh, people are not going to make TikToks. Uh, and the interesting thing is, uh, no one is anyone's competitor. Right now, India is at the starting point of internet revolution. No one is anyone's competitor. There's audience for everyone. All you need is platform. Yeah. So anyone who's going to watch uh, something on YouTube will also have half an hour time to watch something on TikTok. And we'll spend another half an hour to watch something on Instagram. And if we are in lockdown, everyone has 24 hours. People can watch <laughs> as many things as they want. All they need is content. No, I agree with what you're saying. But, you know, you know, it, it, it's the, uh, the consumers are slightly also different, at least in a majority of way. The way the content is uh, uh, delivered and consumed is different from YouTube to, I mean, Instagram to even TikTok. Uh, that's something that even the news channels, uh, uh, you know, treat differently, the way we design the content and deliver it on different platforms. Um, so, you know, what I'm trying to understand is if one of these platforms shuts down, how does this impact somebody who may be largely focused on just YouTube or maybe just Instagram videos? So what might happen is, uh, for example, take myself. Uh, so I'm a YouTuber, so I, I mainly concentrate everything, all my uh, efforts on YouTube. But I have, I had a TikTok account. Uh, I, now it's gone, but of hmm. course, I had a TikTok account. And uh, what TikTok enabled me to do, uh, so I don't do lip syncs, and I don't know to do this, uh, no, the 30-second content uh, TikTokers do. I'm very bad at it. So I accept that. So what I'm good at doing is, uh, I can, uh, yeah. you know, I can show what I, you know, when sometimes I cook, right, I make a vertical video of that and post it. So this vertical video concept, uh, filters, music, yeah. this was not actually, as mentioned before, this was not available on Instagram or, you know, any other platform. In fact, after TikTok became a popular uh, app, uh, or as TikTok started hitting the market, Instagram started their stories, YouTube started their stories. So the vertical video concept, right? It was very handy, you know. You need not uh, tilt your phone. You can just have your phone in the same way and you can uh, have an engaging content in just 30 seconds. So I was able to relate to my... Uh, no, I was able to give new content of uh, how I behave during, especially during this lockdown, to my audience. And it was highly engaging. So things like this would be a mistake, I guess. So the... The, but more the platforms, the more audience you can have, okay. the more reach. All right. I, I get the point that you're making. Yeah. 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 I get the point that you're making. Well, my other question that I had, maybe Sukriti, you can come in on that. Um, will the content yeah. creators also have to uh, think a lot more uh, about the platforms that they're going to be on? Because uh, obviously this is going to create some kind of a concern in the minds of consumers and users. What app am I on? Right. Who's, you know, using my data? Is it being shared by Pakistanis or Chinese or whatever? What if this goes tomorrow? Is, is, is that going to change the way content creators also uh, deal with platforms? Um, honestly, I mean, like Shivani said that she's totally heartbroken right now. And a lot of other uh, TikTokers, I'm sure, are also uh, heartbroken. Uh, I, f I don't know why, but I feel this as an opportunity to sort of explore other uh, platforms. Like you said, there are so many, I mean, there's Instagram for sure, there's YouTube. So, you know, maybe this, this can be used as an opportunity to sort of expand your content and, you know, try on other platforms. Now, you don't know, uh, <laughs> which platform will ban ho jai. That's not really in your hand, right? But what's in your hand right now is to sort of explore as much as you can. Mm. I think uh, we were all very happy with TikTok and, you know, also, one, one thing on TikTok was that, you know, you didn't really have to edit the videos, right? So you could have like, you, you know, you would just make the video and the, there, are, there are so many, there's so much AI in it that it just edits it on, your, on its own. But uh, for platforms like YouTube or Instagram, you have to make like a pre-edited video and then sort of upload it. So I think uh, this, is, this is the time where we, I think, like including me, like content creators like me, everybody can sort of explore and just up their game in terms of other platforms, you know. So, and uh, in terms of audience, I'm sure a lot of audience will also shift along with you. Uh, I don't know why, but I always feel that uh, a creator is not just mm. limited to a platform. The creator is more about talent. 
So if somebody is sort of following you for your talent, I'm sure they'll follow you on other platforms as well. So, uh, so I think uh, let's not lose heart. <laughs> I think we should all sort of. Um, I I say this on national television. I think we should all sort of uh, explore and not lose heart, and maybe explore other platforms. I know it's a really tough time because you know you you just you feel that your career is sort of just taken away in like a minute, right? So what happened to these followers? But I think uh, you would sort of regain them, and I'm hmm. I hope that that happens. So yeah. No, I like that, and I think yes, uh, uh, some kind of a optimistic view will have to be kept here. And uh, <laughs> honestly, uh, if I have uh, and I have had multiple conversations with the content consumers through the day, and almost everybody was like, "Oh, but you know, tomorrow they'll find another platform. We'll find another platform. We're any which is consuming this kind of content on five different places. Maybe one more new one. Oh, well, what's Chingari or what's Mitro? Let's figure yeah. that out. Let's find that one out." But uh, what I actually was uh, uh, also driving at was the content creators probably being a little bit more, um, you know, aware of the responsibility that they may be a a third entity that could be misusing data via this platform. The whole reason that some of these apps have been banned as per the government, um, uh, Shivani, is because the government says that they were sharing this data with third parties and um, that that's, there's a security breach there. Now, that data can actually be used as, uh, as, as uh, the basis for a propaganda war for a uh, foreign country like a US or a China uh, to use it as a soft power tool and push their own interests. Is this development going to make the content creators a little bit more aware of where they're getting into what platform and if, you know, they're on the right side of the things? Well, when I started with TikTok, I was, uh, I was, I was happy to be a content creator there and I explored the platform, uh, you know, completely getting into all the genres that were there. Uh, <clears throat> Till the time this news was, you know, was till the time this news came across to me that this is the probable reasons of reasons of getting uh, it under uh, vigilance or getting banned. Uh, I was also uh, not sure about it. What's happening? How is it happening? Because too many things were going around with me while this was, uh, you know, uh, this came across to me as a creator. Now uh, <clears throat> I'm sure government is. Uh, you know, taking its steps, due steps to take care of uh, the security breach and the and the reasons that they've quoted. Uh, as a creator, I I'm I'm still not able to you know grasp the fact that this is what has happened with me. I I'm still not able to take my next step or next thought because for me this was my two years, two years completely into this hundred percent. And I had no other source of uh, income or uh, employment or any other thing that I've, I've eaten TikTok, I've slept TikTok for two years. So that thought of mine is still there and I'm not able to, you know, make, make a statement here for what will happen next when I go into some other mm. platform and when I start creating tomorrow. Yo, I understand and I'm sure, you know, today has been a, um, a very difficult and heavy day for many of you. Uh, and so obviously it's going to take some time to uh, accept this and then, you know, get some clarity on where you're going to go from here. But let's let's remember what Sukriti said, uh, that there are a lot of options uh, and a lot of other platforms. And very soon, I'm sure we'll get to see uh, all the TikTok stars on the other platforms as well. Thank you so much, uh, guys, for speaking to us and joining us on this uh, discussion about the evolution of social media content, the creation part to the consumption part, the role that platforms like TikTok played, and where do we go from here? Let's see what pops up next, what becomes the next big rage in India as far as content consumption is concerned. Completely out of time on this conversation. Thank you for joining us.